Welcome to Cardinals Post Game. I'm Stevie Taylor alongside John Gidley, and for the first time in school history, your Upper Dublin Cardinals win a playoff game 48 14 over Council Rock North. It was a dominating effort, and it started when Khalif Lee scored from two yards out to give the Cardinals a 7 0 lead. So they hand it off to Khalif Lee, and Khalif Lee is close to the end zone, and he is in for the touchdown, and the Cardinals strike first. They lead 6 0. Halfway through the first quarter, what a start for the Upper Dublin Cardinals. Khalif Lee would score again, this time from 16 yards out, and the Cardinals opened up a 14-0 lead after the first quarter. 3.20 to go in this first quarter. Cardinals lead 7-0, and they're looking for more. Indians showing blitz. Ryan Stover will hand off to Khalif Lee. He's got a huge hole at the middle, and Khalif Lee makes it a 13-0 game. What a start for the Cardinals, John. The Cardinals would strike again later, when Ryan Stover sneaked it in from the one-yard line, and Upper Dublin was in control, 21-0. Goal at the one. Cardinals looking to pound it in and take a three-score lead. Stover will sneak it, and he's in for the touchdown, 20-0 Upper Dublin. It's all Cardinals here in this first half. This next play was the play of the game. Leading 21-0, the Cardinals lined up to punt around midfield, but Stacy Gardner, St Stacey Gardner audibled and called for a fake punt, and it worked perfectly. So Cole D'Andre end up punted away. Cheerleaders doing jumping jacks. And they're going to fake it. They've got a first down and a lot more. Across the 40, 5, 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, and it's a touchdown. Yes. A touchdown, a fake punt, and the Cardinals stun Council oh. Rock. It is now 27 nothing. What a play. I did not expect that one. Stacy Gardner. He said he was ready for tonight's game. <laughs> he sure was. And the score gave Upper Dublin a 28-0 lead at the half. To start the third quarter, Khalif Lee raced 86 yards down the sideline and put the Cardinals in complete control, 34-0. I'm getting my leaves mixed up. Here's the give to Khalif Lee. Khalif across the 30. He's to the 40. Cuts back in midfield into Council Rock territory. And there he goes. 20, 10, 5. Touchdown, Cardinals! Woo! A hat trick for Khalif Lee! Brandon McIlwain and the Council Rock offense would get on the scoreboard when McIlwain scored to make it a 34-8 game. And that's a touchdown. That's the first score of the night for Council Rock. So. Like but Khalif Lee and the Cardinals would respond when Khalif scored his fourth touchdown of the night, which stretched the lead to 41-8. Second and goal from the four. So if you are going to another game, dress warmly. Khalif Lee. <laughs> touchdown. Four touchdowns for Khalif Lee. That's it. Brandon McIlwain would score once again, this time from 14 yards out, which made it a 41-14 game. Talk anymore. It's hard to talk. McIlwain rolling to his right. He's going to scramble, and he's got a touchdown. Brandon McIlwain, his second rushing touchdown of the game. And the final score of the night belonged to Evan Scott, who played an exceptional game on the defensive side of the ball. But here, one, he took the handoff 16 yards for the touchdown. So Ryan Stover will hand it off and up the middle for another upper double and touchdown. That's Evan Scott. And the Cardinals keep pouring it on now. It's 47 14. And with that, the Cardinals get their first playoff win in school history, 48-14 over Council Rock North. After the game, we caught up with some of the team. I'm here with a, hey. I'm here with a bunch of Cardinals after the big win. Guys, what does it feel like to win the first oh. playoff game in school history? I'm a real big fan. I'm a real oh. big fan. Oh. Oh. Feels great. Oh. 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 Feels great. All for Sutton. Oh, yeah, All for Sutton. <laughs> Stop the talk. See All right, what else? No Giddles at the games, man. Announcing, they're just doing a great job, and we just really appreciate hey, it. Hey, 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 can we get a little picture here? Hey, we, hey. let's get a little picture. We got set. Selfie, son. Selfie, over here. They're going to remember this team forever. They're going to remember this team forever. We make a history, baby. Oh, let me get it, man. Hold on. Hold on, let me get it. Let me get it. Let me get it. My lawyer's so good. <laughs> My lawyer's so good that by tomorrow morning, you'll be working in Alaska. <laughs>
Sue so Dress Horn. I'm here with Coach Dover, and Coach Dover, all week we heard about how great of a quarterback Brandon McElwain was. How did you guys game plan to take him out of the game? Uh, Coach Spring put together a great defensive package, and, and our, our kids went out and, and executed to, to the letter. Uh, we really didn't make any mistakes back there. Uh, we gave him a short field, and he took advantage of the one, but I'm so proud of the way the kids played and so happy for these kids to, to, to be the team that get the first uh, playoff win in school history. Yeah, we really just dominated the game out there. It was a great effort from them. So next week we go to Westchester to face Ralston. What do you think about that game? I don't know much about them. I know they have a really good running back, and they're the three seed, and, and uh, we're excited to be getting on a bus next Friday night and heading to Westchester, Ralston. All right, well, thank you for your time. You. Yep. Great job, and see you next week, Coach. Well, as we saw, uh, the team was certainly excited about yeah. uh, their first ever playoff win. And they should be. It was Absolutely. A, just an amazing effort from both the coaching staff and the team. You really have to credit uh, the coaching staff and the defense for their game plan to shut down Brandon McElwain. Yep, and we saw uh, Coach Stover credit mm -hmm. uh, Coach Pring yeah. for creating a brilliant mm -hmm. defensive strategy to oh, uh, yeah. contain Brandon McElwain. It was just amazing. Yeah. And they used the uh, the Chip Kelly signs we saw. That's right, uh, yeah. Hopefully we see them again this week. <laughs> it worked. They worked last week. So this week they go to uh, Westchester to face Ruston. Yep. And, John, this is going to be a tough matchup for the Cardinals. Well, first of all, it's a 45-minute drive. Yeah. So they're, nowhere, they're nowhere near <laughs> And home. it's going to be cold. Yep, and, and it's, it's going to be, be very, very cold. cold. Yeah. I, don't know, I don't know if it's going to be. It's definitely not going to be as windy. Uh, the Hopefully wind's, not. The wind's yeah. supposed to top it should off. Be, it should be in the 30s around game time and maybe even the 20s. We're not sure exactly. Yeah, the wind's it supposed to It snowed a little bit last night. That's right. Uh, so we're, we're into football weather now, that's it, for sure. It topped off, the wind's supposed to top off at about five miles an hour, okay, that's so not certainly too bad. it's not going to be like last week. Yeah, but uh, so this week, what do the Cardinals face in Westchester, Ruston? Uh, well, I think they need to be road warriors because yeah. uh, Ruston has a 10 and 1 record. Yeah. Uh, they beat Conestoga. Granted, Conestoga was the 14 seed, but yeah, they still but they, beat they them, them 47 yeah. to 13. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's definitely going to be a hard fought game if Upper Dublin wants to win. Yeah. And they have a, they're a huge team. They have a big offensive line. We mentioned um, the Cardinals are a smaller defense, and we thought, you know, earlier in the season against PW that could be a problem. It wasn't. You know, Upper Dublin was able to face PW. But Ruston's a different team than PW. They're bigger and they're better. Yep. And it's going to be a tough we, – we thought last week was a tough defensive challenge, but this week's going to be another tough defensive and challenge. And they have an offensive formation yeah. that uh, <laughs> was last regularly used in about the 80s and 90s when yeah. we weren't even born. <laughs> That's right, the wing T formation. They used, they love to use that and get their uh, running back Terry Loper involved. He ran for over 2,000 yards this year, which is quite an accomplishment for a high school running I'll back. I'll say, it's yeah. an accomplishment for an NFL player. <laughs> Especially a high school running back when you're only playing 11 games a year. That's as right. As opposed to 16. Um, yeah, so again, they're the three seed in the, in the, conf or in the tournament. The Upper Dublin Cardinals the sixth seed. So, of course, Westchester has the home field advantage. It's going to be a really tough game. And... The offense for the Cardinals is also going to have a tough challenge because Conis, or excuse me, uh, Ruston's only giving up about 15 points a game in their, throughout the season. That's right. I think uh, they'll definitely want to run the ball. Mm -hmm. uh, they can pass more than they did last week because, uh, yeah. again, the wind won't be as much of a factor. Not, yeah. So Stover will probably get those passes out to, you know, yeah. Matt Thompson and Gary last Fields. Last week against uh, the Council Rock, we saw Ryan Stover th throw only three or four passes. Uh -huh. Khalif Lee and John Lee ran all over Council Rock. Hopefully they can get the running game going this week again, and that'll lead to play action and get Ryan Silver more involved. But it's going to be a tough game. John, what are your predictions for this Friday night? Uh, well, you know, I mean, I know Upper, uh, Westchester Ruston blew out Conestoga, but at the same time, mm -hmm. when Upper Dublin played, plays against a team like Council Rock North with a quarterback like Brandon McElwain, who's number yeah. two in the state, and they beat them like that, they gave him a, you know, a real drubbing, oh, yeah. then... I have to go with the Cardinals. I mean, I know my homerism shows a little <laughs> bit, but I have to go yeah, with the Cardinals. It's, it's going to be a really close game, and you have to credit this team, the Cardinals team, for not just beating Hounds Rock, but really destroying them. And that's going to give them confidence in this game. Um, it could be kind of a letdown game for them coming off the first win in school history, but this team, I talked with Tom Henning, they know that while they did something no other team has done before, they're not done. That's right. They're not satisfied with just getting the first win. They're, they want to keep going. So they're going to keep... Uh, stay motivated for this game and it's going to be really close I think it's going to come down whoever's the ball last honestly yeah. so it's going to be a coin flip whoever wins but I guess I got to go with the Cardinals right? Yep, <laughs> have to yeah. so this Friday night Cardinals take on Westchester Ruston away in Westchester, it'll be a tough game number 3 versus number 6 
and we'll see you Friday night for the Cardinals when they take on Westchester Rust and Golden Knights.